<laughs> Thank you, Brad. Um, well, I'd like to welcome everyone to today's presentation of the RPR Ultimate Realtor app. What we're going to do today is just go through uh, a brief PowerPoint presentation, and I'm going to go live uh, into a demo on my actual mobile device, and then we'll wrap things up again with a PowerPoint presentation. So we shouldn't be too long today. Let me go ahead and put my presentation into presentation mode here if it wants to work with me. So let's go ahead and get started with the Ultimate Realtor app, PR Mobile. So welcome to RPR Mobile with this introduction. You're going to learn all about RPR Mobile. Uh, what it is and how you can use it in your real estate transactions. I'll go through at the end and teach you how to um, just go in and identify your login. So if you're not familiar with the desktop version or maybe you've logged into the desktop or name and password, just some ways where you can generate that information. And then we're going to navigate around the application, go through uh, a couple of user case scenarios, and then I'm going to share with you where you can go to get help and uh, additional resources. RPR, Realtors Property Resources, NAR's wholly owned technology company. We're a subsidiary corporation and a national database of parcel central property for 166 million U.S. properties. That's commercial and residential properties, but we actually have them broken apart. So we have a residential platform and a commercial platform. Both of them are available uh, through our desktop version as well as mobile app version between the two uh, and access to this is a exclusive benefit of realtor members this is available at no additional charge so it's included as a dues benefit with the national association of realtors real quick what rpr is not rpr is not in mls uh, we don't compete with your MLS. We are a tool that you're going to use in conjunction with your MLS to make you the best, um, the best agent that you can be. And we do not have any sort of consumer facing model. So RPR um, is a realtor centric tool. We don't have any consumer app members of the public can download and search for consumer friendly uh, information. We don't have a consumer facing website. Uh, we don't syndicate, redistribute or sell uh, information or listing information and we're not available to anyone other than members of the National Association of Realtors. So you can download RPR Mobile through the App Store or through Google Play Store. It's property information right and when uh, right when and where you need it. So you get all of those layers of information. So now you have that off market public record parcel information for every property from coast to coast. You'll have that additional layer of MLS active sold and off market data from your local MLS. You can search by address. You can apply criteria. You can use your finger to draw on the map. You can filter your results. You can searches and save listing information. You have access to full screen photos. It's one touch call to the listing agent. You can upload your own photos, notes, and you can access and send reports right from your mobile device as well. And it also syncs with your desktop. So everything that you do from your desktop, you can access through your mobile device and everything that you do on your mobile device, you can access through your desktop. From your home screens on your mobile device, the RPR app, as long as technology allows, uh, is 3D Touch Interactive. Uh, and that just means you can do a simple long press from your home our app 
and it's going to pop up a little window that's going to give you a series of shortcuts. So if you're farming and you want to go to a property, you can just hit this property. It's going to detect your GPS location and it's going to pull up that parcel report for that property. Please note that 3D touch is functionality that's uh, operating system based for mobile devices. So it's only accessible on iOS 10 and above, which is the iPhone 6S and newer. Point one. Now, specific to Apple devices, uh, if you have that 6S or newer or iOS 10 and above on those iPads or tablets, you may need to activate your 3D touch. And you just do that by going into your general settings, clicking into your accessibility, and activating the 3D touch. One thing I like to note that's not highlighted on the screen is that there is a sensitivity test. So the iPhone users out there know if you do a long press on your app, your phone is going to think you are wanting to delete that app from your operating system. And you don't want to confuse that pressure with the 3D touch. So there is a little test that you can do so you know the difference between how hard you have to push to delete an app and how hard you have to push to activate your 3D touch. So just make note to that as well. And as I said earlier, um, anyone uh, has access to the App Store or the Google Play Store for their prospective devices. Therefore, anyone could actually download the RPR app. However, it is secured behind a user ID and password. So members of the public install it, but they can't log into it. Members have their login credentials, and they're the same login credentials that you would use from your desktop. So you want to make sure you know your username and password for the desktop, and then you're going to type that into the username and password app. If you have a more complex password, there is a little icon in the password field that you can click on that will unlock and show your, uh, your password. Um, if for whatever reason you don't remember your password, you can also reset the password from our mobile device as well. Whatever device you reset or set your password from, your username and password is the same going from the desktop version to the mobile app version. But we are going to go ahead uh, and get started now. So what I'm going to do is just uh, end this slideshow and minimize it. And I'm going to just move my screen to my phone. Now, I am on an iPhone 8. So if you're an iPhone user and you're using a smartphone, it's pretty much going to work like my phone. Uh, if you're an Android-based user, it's going to be um, close to uh, the same. Sorry, my, uh, my phone didn't reset from the last lap I was in. Uh, if you're an Android-based user, your phone's pretty much going to work the same. Some of the icons may be different. Obviously, your app store is going to be different, but you'll get the gist um, in itself. Also, uh, I'm demoing this, again, on a smartphone. So for those of you that are heavy users with your tablets, uh, our app is um, device-specific. So if you're on an iPad, the layout's going to be a little bit different than if you were on your iPhone. So if you have a, a phone and a tablet, layout's going to be different simply because tablet has a much larger screen size than your mobile device does. So just kind of keep that in mind as we go through. Now, before we go into the app, I real quick just want to get uh, into my phone. I'm going to go into my app store. And I just want to share with you what our mobile app looks like. So if you haven't downloaded it, uh, just go into your respective app store, go to your search. In that search box, you're just going to type in RPR, and you're going to get a series of results that come up, and you're looking for the result that says R that little trademark logo. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that RPR mobile, and then we're going to go uh, past the banner ad at the top, I scroll down just a little bit, and you're going to see here this top app. Uh, it's the blue logo with the white kind of social media share icon uh, is our app. So from that point, you're just going to go ahead and open it. If you 
will make you log in. But once you've logged into the app from that point in time, you just find the app on your home screens. Mine is that top row, second column in. I'm just gonna click on that app and it's gonna do a refresh and it's gonna bring me right into my home screen where now I can access information. Now our demo area for today's presentation um, is a market in Gilbert, Arizona. So it's coming up Val Vista Classic, which is where my phone is setting the GPS designation to. Uh, and it's gonna come right into our home screen and it's gonna give us our um, MLS activity within our market. So it's GPS enabled, wherever your phone is, it's gonna detect your GPS location and then give you inventory within a net of your location. And that net can either be a half mile, a mile, five miles, 10 miles, however far out you wanna go. So if this is the first time you're coming into the app, I just wanna make you aware that our app does need to work with your phone. So if you get alerts that come up that says RPR wants to use your location services, you wanna go ahead and grant RPR permission to do so if you're trying to upload a photo into the app, we have to have access to your camera in order to upload that photo into you're trying to take a verbal note. We're going to have to have access to use the microphone on your phone. So any little alert that comes up that says, do you grant RPR permission to access this information? You want to make sure that we're granting permission that way we can use those services on your mobile device. But let's go ahead and take a look at our mobile device. So if, if we go screen, you're going to see four icons right here along the top. So the icon to the far right hand side is a little house. That icon is going to take you back to the home screen no matter where you are in the RPR app. So if I wanna see the four new listings that are for sale from my home screen, I can take my thumb and click that four new listings and it's gonna pop up those properties on the map. Maybe I click on one of the icons for a property that's for sale, begin to view the additional details of the property. Now I wanna get back to my homepage and maybe see what the recent sales are in my market area. I can again just click on that house in the upper right hand corner and it's going to bring me back to my home page. The next icon that you see is a little circle uh, with an arrow in it. That is your GPS or your map. So if we wanted to see where Val Vista Classic was, uh, I can click on that icon second to the right and it's going to go ahead and load. And if I start to zoom in, and all I'm doing to zoom in, since you can't see my hands, I'm just pinching and zooming on my iPhone screen. Glowing blue orb right there is where my GPS location services are, okay? So it's just gonna say, hey, this is where you are, and this is the activity around you. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that house. It's gonna bring me back to my homepage. If I have a property address that I wanna search, I can then just click on that magnifying glass at the top and it's gonna bring up my search fields where I can search by address, I can search by city, I can search by MLS ID number. You'll see below that I have options to search for my listings. I have options to search for schools. I can search for owner name or parcel ID within a zip code or city name that I typed in. So I have all of my search tools right here under that magnifying glass. And then all the way to the right, okay, I am going to have a gear, okay, or excuse me, all the way to the left, I have a gear. So if I click on that gear, essentially, it just slides my home page over to the right. And it brings me a whole menu of user settings that I have the ability to navigate through. So let me share just a couple of these user settings with you. 
This is set up in an accordion style. So if you want to go ahead and take a look at your profile, you can click into your profile. It's going to pop open. It's going to share your agent photo, your brokerage EXP logo. You'd have your contact information. And then you're going to see just below that there's a link where you can edit your profile. If you need to edit your profile, it does feed back into the desktop and vice versa. But just above that, there's a link here that says share my contact info. So when you click on the link share my contact info, this is working as a digital business card. So if you're ever out and about, maybe you're at an open house. Someone says, hey, I'd like to get more information on the property. Do you have a business card? I'd like to reach out to you in the future. You could say, well, I have a digital business card. If you want to go ahead and give me your phone number, I'll be happy to text message my card to you. And then all you have to do is type in their phone number. So if I type in a phone number, I can text it to myself. I could click in and then I can go ahead at that point and just send my contact information to that prospective buyer, okay, or client or prospect. Uh, and what's great about that is now that they have your contact information via text message, you also have their phone number via text message. So that works uh, both ways. So in order to collapse my profile, I'm just going to click that profile link. It's going to close it. The next option your profile is our user settings. So I'm going to click into the user settings. And what you're going to see here is that you can override your location. Now, most of you, uh, you're going to not use this field. It's, you're going to use the GPS settings with your mobile device. But just let me give you a scenario where you would want to override the location. Um, I'm sure there are some of you out there uh, that really just work with sellers. And if that's the case, there is a farm area um, that you like to farm. So let's say I'm a seller um, and I farm a area by the name of Ash Ashland Ranch in Gilbert, Arizona. I can come in, oops, and it's gonna recognize Ashland Ranch in Gilbert, Arizona. I save those settings. What I'm essentially gonna get once it refreshes, Okay, and I go back to my home page. I'm going to get essentially a hot sheet of everything that's going on in Ashland Ranch. And that hot sheet is always going to be on the home page of my mobile device. So anytime I want to see what's going on, I can see there's 13 properties for sale. I can see there's three new listings, 23 recent sold, one distress, one for lease, an upcoming open house. So I, if I wanted to see what that distressed property was, I could click that link and that would be available at my fingertips. So that is just one user scenario where you may want to override a location. Uh, but for those of you that drive around, you search for farm areas, you work with buyers, uh, you want to see activity based off of GPS location, you are not going to override that location. The next thing we have, if I scroll down a little bit, is your nearby. So what this actually does is anytime you're looking at local inventory, time you're casting a net to see nearby sales or you're casting a net to see nearby sold, um, it's going to say, well, how wide do you want that net to be? So I can grab this little blue dot with my finger and just slide it across. And my net can be anywhere from a half mile out to 10 miles out. When I get to my net, uh, I can just let go. And then that will become my default for my nearby. Now, Gilbert, Arizona, um, it's a pretty dense area, so I'm good with a half a mile um, location. The next thing we have, so take a look at your market. 
Uh, you guys are agents from all across the country. If you're in a market that has an average of 68 days on market, set your recently sold 90 days. If you're in an area uh, that maybe is looking at uh, 100 days on market, you could set your recent sales back a little bit further, maybe to 120 days. So you have that option for that recently sold uh, where you're working. So those are some of the custom settings that you have. In order to save those custom settings, just click on that home screen bar that you see on the right or collapse your user settings by clicking back into or back at the top where it says user settings. You're going to get a pop up that says, do you want to save it? It's going to save it. And now you can move on to the next setting option that you have on your device. Moving along, another thing I want to share with you are your notifications. I'm sure all of you are quite aware of what a push notification is, and I'm going to share my push notifications with you today. So um, on the iPhone, you can just pull down from the top of your screen and you're going to see um, some alerts or notifications. So I have notifications from my Gmail. I have, there's that text message. So if we want to see what that text message looks like, I can click on that. That's just what a push notification is. There are little alerts that come up with your phone um, as you're not using it. And you can view these push notifications. And here's one yesterday. That's a RPR push notification. You'll see I get a lot of them. I like them. Um, here is one that says, hey, there was a list price decrease on a saved property. You have a property for a buyer fave on Rome Street and that property decreased by 10,000. So I can just click on that alert and it's gonna bring in RPR and it's gonna go ahead and load that property and bring up the information that I wanna see. Now I'm just gonna touch my home screen so it doesn't do that because I don't wanna navigate away but that's the idea of a push notification. So you can activate these notifications in your settings. So anytime you have a saved parcel, whether it's your listing and it's saved because you're working with a seller, maybe it's a property that you're going on a listing presentation. Maybe it's a, of a buyer. So anytime that property has a status change, essentially it goes from off market to active. It goes from active to pending or under contract. It goes from pending to sold. It goes from active to expired. Whatever that status changes, you're gonna get that push notification of that detail. Anytime there's a list price change, anytime there's an estimated value change, anytime you generate a report, all you have to do to activate these push notifications is to toggle it on and that's going to enable that notification type. So you do have some push notifications. And then of course, if I close out of that at the very bottom of your user settings, you're going to see one touch to reach out uh, by email or phone to our call center and you can add us to your contacts. But let's go ahead and close out of our settings. And I'm just going to do that by clicking on that gear again, my homepage back over to the right. Okay, maybe, let's see. Doesn't want to, maybe it's a little bug in the system today. Let me go ahead and close out of it. And we'll go back, back in. Okay. So here we are, we're back at our homepage. Now we did cover um, the home key on the upper right hand side. So I just want to make you aware. We actually have home pages that you can essentially swipe through. So what we're looking at here are inventory within that net of that half mile that I set up in my settings. So we can see the properties that are for sale, the new listings, the recently sold. I can swipe either to the left, okay, or to the right, okay, and I can get additional screens of information. So if I swipe to the left, I'm just going to get local market conditions 
for my GPS location. Median estimated home value, median list price, median sales price, uh, increase in property values, average days on market. This is great if you're driving around looking for potential farm areas. You pull into a neighbor, what the median home values are for that neighborhood. You can just open up your app, a quick swipe to the left, and you have access to those home values. Another quick swipe to the left, it's gonna give me my search options. That's the same as clicking that search magnifying glass at the top. So I can swipe either left and right, navigate through these home screens, and you can set any of these home screens to be your default home screen when you come into the app. So if you're a go-to searcher, you wanna go into the app, you wanna throw in that property address without having to swipe a screen or click on a magnifying glass, you just do that long press on that house on the upper right-hand side, and it's gonna set that page as your default homepage. Once your default homepage is set, you're gonna know which one it is because that house is gonna turn from white to green. And it's easy as that to set your default home page. But let's go into a user case scenario. Let's say we get a call from a potential uh, buyer. They're driving around. They come across a property that they're interested in. It has a for sale sign. They want information right away. We're picking our kids up from school or closing up shop. But in order to go ahead, go into our RPR app. Click on that magnifying glass. I'm going to type into that address field, the property address that they're looking for, let's say it's 139 West Mesquite uh, Street. What's gonna happen is you'll see it comes up, so our PR is just identifying out of all 135 or so residential parcels, it's gonna identify a match to the address that you're typing, and it's gonna pull up my property detail. So we see the four quadrant image. If you look to that lower right quadrant, you're gonna see some small icons. That's our Google Street View. That's our aerial view. That's our four quadrant view. And that is our single image view, where if we turn our phone horizontal, we will get that full screen view of those property photos. Okay, so we can see um, all of that information from here. I'm gonna just turn my phone back up. And what we're going to see just below the property photo is that this property is pending uh, and it's no longer available. And I can also see that the list price was 420000 So I could tell my buyers that it's under contract, but this particular buyer, I also know their max list price is 400000 So let's just scroll through and look at some information. We'll see the listing agent. Blue is a hyperlink, one touch call to the listing agent, one touch call to email. Uh, we have our property description. Then we're going to see the location details. I can enlarge my map. I can generate driving directions. I can actually view traffic counts if I want to. Uh, but if I have a buyer, they like this neighborhood, this house doesn't meet their criteria or it's not available. So the next thing they want to know, is there anything else in the neighborhood for sale? So all I have to do is click that link below my map that says nearby for sale. When I click that option, it's going to cast that net of a half mile radius from my subject property and let me know what's for sale. Where we're going to see some different colored boxes and different looking icons on here. So if I go to the bottom of my screen, I'm going to see a layer pin to the far left. It's that first icon from the left. If I click on that, my map legend is going to pop up and say, hey, anything that's a red box is for sale. It's distressed. Anything that's a light blue is for sale. Anything that's a dark blue anything that looks like it's a grayed out house, actually multiple properties. So maybe those are condos or townhomes and there's multiple listings available. So you can see everything that's going on with my map. Another thing that you're gonna start to notice is we have all different price points available as well. So I'm gonna go back down to the bottom of my map. Right in the middle is a button that says filter. So I'm gonna click that filter and this is where I can come in and essentially custom 
minimize my, say my buyer is really looking for active properties. They're not interested in a distressed property. Okay. Uh, I'm going to scroll down and it says include all property types. I'm going to toggle that over to no, and I'm going to make my selection that my buyer just wants a single family home. I could do basic property filters like beds, baths, living area, but I'm going to keep it and sweet and just slide this price range indicator to my max list price of 400,000. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply those filters. And now I have all of those properties that are within my buyer's price range. I can view those properties from the map just by clicking that uh, property icon, that blue box. I can click anywhere in that purple circle and it's going to collapse that. But now if we go to the top of the screen, you're going to see a button that says list. If I click that list, it's just going to switch that map to a street view. Okay. So now I can see the street view information. I could say, oh, here's a property on Laguna. They're having an open house. So I can then just click on that property on Laguna. And from here, it's going to go ahead and load all of the property information for my buyer. I have that snapshot of photos. See, it's a vacant property. It's move-in ready. I could see the properties listed at 360,000. The RVM has it for 368. Star confidence score. I could see the beds, the baths, the days on market, the open house. I can add that open house to my calendar by selecting add to calendar. I can see all of the upcoming open houses are available uh, and add any of those to my calendar. I can reach out to the listing agent. I have the public marketing remarks. If I wanted to see nearby comps, what neighboring homes have sold for, I hit nearby comps and all those green buttons are sold within the last 90 days. Everything that's gray sold within the last nine months. Okay, so we see what homes are selling for in that market. And I'm just going to go to the upper right. I'm going to hit that back arrow. That's going to bring us back to our property detail. We get the homeowner facts. We get the home facts where we can look between the public record fact, the listing record facts. We can make changes to the property detail if there's a discrepancy between the public and listing record. That way, when we send this report out to our buyer, they will see that. We get homeowners association information, median estimated home values, price change history, prior sales transactions, okay, schools, interior features, exterior features, legal description with a link to the plot map, and mortgage information, tax assessment information rolls out our property information. So let's say we wanna go ahead and just add or send a buyer report to our buyer. We're gonna go ahead and click reports. We're gonna select a mini property re report. You're gonna notice when I go into the mini property report, things are automatically excluded from my report because those are my defaults that carry through from the desktop. So those are available. You can include or exclude anything just by using that little yes, no toggle. I'm gonna hit next. And then again, I can email it direct to my client or I can download it and share it with them through social media or through text message. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get this report real quick. And now I'm gonna come back, exit the report, and we're gonna be back to our property detail, okay? Another great report, by the way, that you can generate, uh, if I add a report, maybe there's this property and two or three other properties that they'd like to see we can actually create a buyer's tour. So we can come in and say, hey, you wanna see this property? Uh, we can also add this property to the buyer's tour and we can add buyer's tour as well. And then we can select next. We can route the properties, uh, but here's the properties that we're gonna see within that buyer's tour. I'm gonna select next. 
And then that's just going to generate a nice side by side report of all the properties that my buyer is going to see when we go on that tour. So I'll share that report with you in just a couple of minutes. Some other things that we can do from our property detail, uh, we do have the ability to come down and save this property as a favorite. If I can spell. <laughs> so we can save it with a custom name. All we have to do is click that star on the bottom uh, right side that's going to allow us to save that property as a favorite. We can also add notes. We can add a text note. Okay. As we save that, it's going to date and timestamp it. We can include that in our reports. Okay. We can add photos. We can add memos. Okay. So lots of stuff that you can do uh, from this detail. So that's one scenario. Let's say we get a call from a potential seller. They're interested in us listing their property for sale. And we just want to do a little bit of research with our mobile app. So again, I can swipe or click on that magnifying glass at the top. I'm just going to type in and enter my seller's address. They live at 3438 uh, East Merlot. Uh, in Gilbert, Arizona, I love this with the mobile app that I only have to do a partial typing of the property address. Uh, so here we are at 3438 East Merlot. We can see it had a canceled listing. It was available for lease. It was a four bed, three bath. We could see the listing ID, um, what the list date was, how long it was in uh, the MLS. We get that public marketing remark, and again, we get down to the map. And this is an essential tool for the agent on the go. A great option that you have here when you're conversing with that homeowner, if they're reaching out to me today and I'm booked solid today and I set up a showing appointment for uh, Friday afternoon, I'm going to give that seller a little bit of homework. I'm going to tell them to pick out the high selling points of their property. I want them to also think about what could be detrimental to a potential buyer, um, what things they may not like. Um, if they've done any improvements, I want them to identify the improvements. And then what I'm going to say is in about two minutes, you're going to get a text message or an email from me with a rough CMA of properties that have recently sold in your market. And I want you to think about that number in relation to your property. And when we sit down at the table tomorrow, fine tune that CMA. So what I'm going to do through my mobile app is just come in and select that option right below the map that says create comp analysis. So what I'm going to do through my mobile device is look at information for the subject property, see the public record information. I'm going to see the historical MLS information. I can come in and make changes or confirm okay, um, from my mobile app. I'm going to save it and select next at the top. What it's going to do at this point is identify properties that have recently sold that are similar to my subject property. Now, let me explain what you see on the map here. I can click on any of these, okay, and add it to my comps list. But what I'm gonna do is hit the button at the top that says list, okay? And what's gonna happen, I just wanna share this with you. We see properties that recently sold we can click on the property address. It's gonna give us that full property detail. A green recent sale means it sold within the last 90 days, okay? Easy peasy. Go back now and I can add this to my comps. But if there's a property that says off market, it doesn't necessarily mean it's off market. It did sell. 
it just didn't sell within the last 90 days. Okay, maybe it sold 93 days ago. Maybe it sold um, 120 days ago. Okay, it's still a recent sale. It's just not within the last 90 days. Now, this is going to pull both public record sales. Okay, and MLS sales. So, off market sale could also be um, a public record sale. So just keep that in mind. So we're gonna add real quick, just a couple of these uh, to our CMA. I'm gonna select next at the top. Now we can change the order that these comps come in. We can remove it and go back and add more. Again, we can click into the full property address to obtain more information. And we can rate how this property compares to our subject property by using this little slider scale, okay? We have a section to the bottom here where we can add notes, okay? They're date and time stamped. We're gonna select next, and it's gonna set pricing based off of the comps that we've selected. Now you can edit this if you want to, but right from here, you can email or download this report and share it with your seller. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit those reports. Okay. But here we get homeowner facts, public record facts, median estimated home value. You're just scrolling through, looking at this information. Okay, I'm gonna jump back up to the top. Again, we can save this as a favorite listing presentation on Merlot. That way, if we go see them on and we get a push notification on Sunday, actively listed, we know what's going on with that property. So let's go back to our homepage and real quick, I wanna show you a couple of other tools that we have and then we're gonna wrap things up. So at the bottom of our page, our home screen, you're gonna see a couple of buttons. On the far left-hand side, you have recent reports. Uh, if you're driving around, you pull into a neighborhood, you want to see recent market activity for that neighborhood, you want to generate a neighborhood report, you want to create a buyer's tour, you can create reports off the fly just based off of your GPS location. If we jump to the far right, you're going to see a saved. This is just going to pull up any saved property that you have. Okay, as well as any saved search that you have, whether you save this search through your desktop or through your mobile device. Okay, we have a recent on the bottom and that recent is pretty much everything. Any property that I looked at, whether I looked at that property through my mobile device or through my desktop. Any recent search that I've executed, any recent report that I've generated, and any property note that I've saved. So if I jumped back to our reports, here's that seller's report for East Merlot. Every report works this way. If I wanna view the report, I just click on the report and open it. Now, if you're familiar with our reports, they look the same, whether you generate it from the desktop or the mobile device. Here is that report. Okay, now from here, I can share this by clicking that X with the arrow, okay? But I don't have to look at the report to share it. I can just come in and share the report right from here. I can share it by email, I can text message it, I could tweet it, I could Facebook it, I could send it through my Gmail, I could send it through Facebook Messenger. If I'm going on a listing presentation, I can add it right to my home screen. So you can share all of your reports right from that recent button on the bottom. Another cool search that you can do, by the way, guys, any type of search is imaginable. Uh, if I have someone, again, that's interested in properties in Ashland Ranch, if you know the name of the subdivision, you could come in and type the name of that subdivision. It's going to identify it. And you can search for properties right from your mobile app. Okay, if it's, if it's a search that you want to filter, apply those filters. Okay, if it's a search that you wanna save, go ahead and save it for your buyer. Okay, 
all of that information available. And now it's also accessible right from your desktop. So let's go ahead uh, and let me just switch back to our mobile presentation. That way I can go through and just wrap things up with how to get your login info. Uh, so in review, we went through how to use it when you're showing properties, how to do property and neighborhood research, take photos, notes, and memos, contact a listing agent, all of these good things to help you do what you have to do to get that job done on an in and out basis, all from your mobile device. This is a way to have immediate client response and immediate lead gen, guys. When you're at that open house, have all of those reports pre-generated and have them available through your mobile device. Share those reports with those prospective buyers via text message. Pull a market area activity report. Share it on your HOA Facebook page. Send that information out. Share those new listings on Facebook or on internet or through Twitter because you have that one touch availability now with the mobile device. So download our mobile app through your prospective app store or Google Play Store. Um, log into it and start using it today. And don't forget, we have lots of additional resources available on our blog. You can click the link through um, settings in our mobile device or just go to blog rpr.com always available through the bottom of our desktop one touch call to customer support uh, through the app as well with that being said i'm going to wrap things up and i'm going to go through questions if you have any other than that we are good to go